so one of these. Could we find them on the internet so they're like completely perfect? Yeah, whatever Instead gets you drawing, there. Trace around mine would be like we. They have quite good templates online if you Google them. They just mount them onto card, like Ooh. the shapes. You're on it. <laughs> I'm on it today. <laughs> staple gun, you guys thought I was crazy. How else would you stick something on a table? <laughs> staple gun. Like staples in it. I on do underneath, I wouldn't do expect her to just staple over her trimming. What's up? Like, the staple gun. Because they all looked at me, they all laughed and I said, Did you use a staple gun? And then you didn't yeah. use a staple yeah, gun. We did for, I put a really thick, sort of thicker one of these and mounted it to it. And then that could be staple gun to the edge. Yeah. Because otherwise, it's like it was too heavy for you know to um, you know tape it or anything. Or glue it. And then that could be that could be replaced every once in a while. He's still using it. He's got a few years out of it. <laughs> but he was gutted. He was going everybody's interested in the tablecloth, not the prints. Yeah. <laughs> All the people at the show wanted the... We should do printed table for us. <laughs> <laughs> Collaboration. But the amount it costs as well, the fabric, it did cost about £800 to make. For like, materials in my time. We put our table for Yeah, and that's why I said, uh, if you want to do it again. So two days would have been knocked off if I had it. 300 quid would have been knocked off there. Three, four hundred quid. For my time, two days would have been to cement what it might have cost 50 quid or something. At the, uh, yeah, not, I don't know about 60, maybe 70 quid to have it pleated. So that's a big difference to time wise. So that would have knocked the price down. But it's doing the prototype first, isn't it? So, right, so make little templates. I have a pencil knocking around here somewhere. Well, you can now go into like a tablecloth. Mm -hmm. You can now go into the tablecloth. Business. I was trying to say to my daughter, do you want a little job? You can knock these out all day long. Mm -hmm. She's like, yeah. <laughs> right, so I've just done small ones here for now. Oops. Go a bit bigger, it'll make your life easier. I'm just going to do one of each. These aren't very even. <laughs> My castle top's got cut off. I'll have to make it shorter. When is castle top used? Uh, you know, like, like the like battlements on a castle. Yeah. Yeah, but like when is it used for like? Do you see day? like you, you see like sort of medieval yeah. things that have got, like trim? You know, they might be dagged or sculpted or. <coughs> like on the knights, like tunics, like. Yeah. 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 I was thinking like you know the picadils in the shoulders. Yeah, that would be the little scallops. Yeah. Right, come over to the machine. I might leave the zipper foot on actually, it's easier to sit. So when you're past my pen, come, come round here so you can see. So when you're machining, when you do a point, if you machine and go and then turn and keep it pointed, what do you think will happen? It won't when you um, try and turn it out. Yeah, it it'll be flat. It'll be flat like that. So on any points that you're doing, outward points, you need to go and do one kitty corner, I call it. You know, when you cut the corner. You know, the way a cat cuts the corner when they do. 
like that and then that gives you a little bit of space and you'll get a sharper point so you don't stitch you don't stop at the point and turn you stop just before it go kitty corner and then carry on stop kitty corner carry on on the in ones you can turn that point but when it's going towards going out don't on a curve if you knock it down to a two it'll make it smoother if you do a three or a four it'll be a bit like a 50 pence piece <laughs> and i tend to do a two on of these when i get to the points i'll go to a three so i'm going to machine all these when you get to the, do it by hand when you get close to where you need to stop So go by hand, stop, and I'm going across the point. I'm just going to give myself a little bit more. By hand, go back to my two. Wait, so do you go bigger on the, on the point? On the point, just to give, cause, because I'm on a number two stitch, it's only tiny. So, so depending on the weight of your fabric as well, you might need to do, sometimes like thicker ones, you might need to do quite big stitch or two stitches. I usually do a bigger stitch because in the book it says do two, but that means there's a point in the middle and it's stopping you. So I just do, I change my stitch. So I'm going to a three, more or less. One across. Back to a two. Is it even on corners? So do it on the corners that will be on yeah. the outside, but it doesn't matter so much. On, on these, these ones. ones, you just turn. Okay. Oh, so you, for an outer yeah. corner that you that's pointing out. So these ones I'm just turning. And don't cut them out beforehand. If you cut them out and then try to go around them, it'll look crap. You'll be there all day long. That's all. Yeah, you'll be crying. So cutting them out. So cut. Seam allowance. How big is the seam allowance? Quite small. Quite small. So depending on how fine your fabric it is. You don't want to go and how loose if it's really loose this is the reason why I'm doing number two stitch it can fray and then just open up on you so I want to clip into the corners I want to take the corners away here and you can as well go like that a little bit Yeah, and then turn them inside out. Yeah. <laughs> and 
and then very gently you can get a I've left my thing at home the little tools that poke them out be careful of you using your scissors Eileen or do you want separate ones for each one you can do if you do separate for each do about three on each mm -hmm. and then you can stagger them in your book on top of each other So if you use something rounder on and run it along like that, it kind of smooths it out for you. I, I tend to like to leave a little gap because when you just do stop and go up, it's really hard to get it smooth. So. I need to go 